Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for this opportunity we have now to bring, to continue to worship you, Father, by bringing forth the bread of life. Father, I thank you for your word. It is a guide to our path. It is a it is a safety net for us, Father, as your people, Father, that we might continue serving you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Father, as I pray every week, Father, I invite your Holy Spirit to come and take these lips of clay and use them for your glory, Father. Lord, I yield control of this tongue to your to your Ruach. May he speak to us today, Father, because as I pray all the time, Father, your people do not need to hear from me, but they do need to hear from you tonight, today, Father. So just energize this, I pray, with your Holy Spirit. And Father, energize our ears to hear, and energize our our. Uh, Hearts to be able to grasp the message that your rock has to us tonight, Father, and all your people, all y'all's people said. Amen. Amen. We are going to be in everybody's favorite chapter, Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. Okay. In Leviticus chapter 10, I'm only going to read one verse, and that is verse 10. Where Yahweh God tells his people, he says, you are to distinguish between the holy and the common, and between the unclean and the clean, and you are to teach the people of Israel all the statutes that the Lord has spoken to them by Moses. Okay? Now, in our society... People are really stressing the need for everyone to fit in. Okay? Under modern day political correctness, we are all mandated to accept everybody and everything. That is, of course, except for Christianity. We are fed a constant diet of our needing to accept Islam as a religion of peace, despite their many acts of terrorism. We are uh, fed a constant diet of our needing to accept the LGQBT couples as normal. We are fed a constant diet of abortion being a woman's right. And we are fed a constant diet of uh, us needing to accept politi uh, political corruption as normal. And we are fed a constant diet of a man can be a woman if he wants to identify as one and vice versa. We are fed a constant diet of the fact that big government is the answer to all of our problems. We are fed a constant diet that we can worship any god or idol except, of course, for the god of the Bible. And we are fed a constant diet that those of us who work for a living should support those who refuse to work for a living. That pretty much sums up our society pretty well, doesn't it? Okay. Now, I could go on and on, but the point that I'm trying to make is that society is trying to make us, as believers, mix holy things with unholy things. Okay. They want us to swallow and accept their agenda and ignore God's agenda, okay? They want you to accept that LGBTQT lifestyles are just normal lifestyles and forget that God calls it an abomination. They want you to accept that murdering unborn children is a woman's right and ignore the fact that God said, thou shalt not commit murder. They want you to turn some actor, singer, or ball team into an idol in spite of the fact that God said to have no other gods before him. The basis of all this nonsense, at the base of all this nonsense, is something that's known as syncretism. And I might not be pronouncing that right, okay? But it is straight from the pit of hell. So what is syncretism? Well, according to Webster's Dictionary, syncretism, it's a Greek word, syncretismos, it means union of Cretans, okay? And a Cretan is an inhabitant of the island of Crete as revealed 
in the epistle of Titus in the New Testament and confirmed by some Cretan poet that I've never heard of, somebody by the name of uh, Epimenides or something like that, okay? And according to the ultimate authority, Wikipedia, <laughs> Cretans were considered to always be liars, evil beasts, and gluttons. We get our word Cretan from it, okay? So syncretism means the attempted reconciliation or union of different or opposing principles, practices, or parties, as in philosophy or religion. And that is the Webster's Dictionary of Syncretism. Okay? Syncretism is nothing more than a mixing of clean and unclean. It is nothing more than a mixing between the holy and the ordinary, and is thus unbiblical. And we as believers should not practice it in any form whatsoever. Unfortunately, even in the church world, people do. Okay? So the first point I want to make is that syncretism goes against God's claim to exclusive worship. And I'm going to read off a bunch of scriptures to you right now, and you can try to follow along or you can just sit back and listen. It doesn't matter to me, but if you... I would encourage you to look these scriptures up on your own. Exodus 20, verse 3. God says, you shall have no other gods before me. Okay? In Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6. Hey, we, we just quoted part of that here. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Verses 13 through 15. It is the Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you, for the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and he destroy you from the face of the earth. Okay? Isaiah 43, verses 10 through 12. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no other. There is no Savior. I declare the saved and proclaimed when there was no strange God among you, and you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and I am God. Isaiah 44 to 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. The last scripture I'm going to quote for this point is 1 Corinthians 8, verses 4, 4 through 6. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all things and for whom all we exist, and one Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. So as we can clearly see from these passages of Scripture, God demands our exclusive worship. We are to worship Him and Him alone, and we are clearly to not mix the clean with the unclean. Light and darkness do not mix. Good and evil never mix. Godly things and ungodly things never mix. Holy things and unholy things do not mix. Which brings me to point number two. Let me make one thing perfectly clear here. God is never going to bless an unclean thing. He is never going to do it. In this world, and unfortunately often in the church world, everything, anything goes. Christians have so overemphasized and, if you'll pardon the expression, greasified God's great grace that it has become a license for a people to do whatever they want to do without regard for what the Word of God says about the subject. Let me give you some examples. 
I know what the Bible says to not commit adultery, but if I cheat on my wife, God will forgive me. I know the Bible says to not steal, but I need that money and the people that I'm stealing from, they don't need it. Besides, God will forgive me. Or how about I can go get that divorce, get that abortion and God will forgive me. I can go to that election booth and I can vote for that pro-LGBTQT candidate or a pro-abortion candidate because God doesn't care about politics. And besides that, he'll forgive me anyway. Or how about God made me a man, but I want to identify as a woman and use women's bathrooms. <laughs> Haven't heard that recently, have we? I have told you in the past how this is nothing more than a person shaking their fist in, at, in the face of God and screaming at him that they are not going to let God tell them who they are. Nothing more than rebellion. Let me tell you something. Those who shake their fist in God's face today are going to be the ones tomorrow who cry out for the rocks to fall on them on Judgment Day and hide them from the fierce wrath of God. Amen. Uh, and here we go dealing with specifically today. How about this? I can let my kids and me, if I so desire to, dress up for Halloween. After all, it's just for fun. Oh, how Hasatan would love to get us to all see sin is just fun. Halloween has nothing to do with holiness. It has nothing to do with righteousness. It is not clean. It's, it's all about Hasatan and his kingdom, as witnessed by the fact of the things that are represented. Witches, vampires, zombies, mummies, demons, on and on and on and on. If you need proof of these things, look it up. How many have ever heard of a man by the name of Anton LaVey? Anton LaVey is the founder of the Church of Satan, and he says, this is a direct quote from him, I am glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night out of the year. Welcome to Halloween. That's a direct quote from that man. Get a little of this. When I was past, when I was pastoring a supposed holiness church in Arcola, Illinois, I wrote a letter to the editor of the local paper reproaching a local school teacher for encouraging her students to go out and TP the town. I also told the Sunday school teachers in that church that they couldn't hang up pictures of carved pump, pumpkins in their Sunday school rooms. Guess what? That holiness church almost run us out of town over that, didn't they? Uh -huh. Yeah, they did run us out at the same time for yeah. voting on whether to keep the pastor or not. <laughs> they were appalled. Not at the teacher for encouraging littering and vandalism, but they were appalled at, appalled at me for standing up against it. And this coming from a supposed holiness congregation. How about when you hear something like this? I do not need to follow the biblical dietary laws. Let me be very plain here. God forbids you to eat pork fish, shrimp, and lobster. In Leviticus 11, 7 through 8, it says, And the pig, because it parts the hoof and is cloven-footed, but does not chew the fud, is uh, fud, the, the, uh, does not chew the cud, is unclean to you. You shall not any, eat any of their flesh, and you shall not touch their carcasses. They are unclean to you. Skip down a couple verses to verses 10 through 12. But anything in the seas or the rivers that does not have fins and scales of the swarming creatures in the waters and of the uh, 
living creatures that are in the waters is detestable to you. You shall regard them as detestable. You shall not eat any of their flesh, and you shall detest their carcasses. Everything in the waters that does not have fins and scales is detestable to you. Anybody ever see a shrimp that had fins? Anybody ever see a lobster that had fins? No. So it is unclean to you. Or how about this This. probably heard this one before too i do not need to keep the biblical feast as they are just for the jews and because of syncretism i can keep christmas and easter instead leviticus 23 verses 1 through 1 through 2 and the lord spoke to moses saying speak to the people of israel and say to them these are the appointed feasts of the lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations they are my appointed feast. And I want to encourage you to read the rest of Leviticus chapter 23 if you don't understand about the feast of God. But notice here that these are the feast of Yahweh. These are my appointed feast, says the Lord, not specifically just the feast of the Jews. Now the Jews keep them. Thank God for that, or most of them anyway. But they're God's feast. They're not just feast for the Jews, they're the feast for God's people. So now, I want you to specifically heed these warnings. In Deuteronomy 12, 1 through 4, it says this. These are the statutes and the rules that you shall be careful to do in the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you to possess all the days that you live on the earth. You shall surely destroy all the places where the nations whom you shall dispossess serve their gods on the high mountains and on the hills and under every green tree. You shall tear down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and burst and burn their asherim with fire. You shall chop down the carved images of their gods and destroy their name out of that place. You shall not worship the Lord your God in that way. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 4. When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be a found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering, anyone who practice, practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who encourages inquires of the dead for whoever did, does these things is an abomination to the lord and because of these abominations the lord your god is driving them out before you you shall be blameless before the lord your god for the for these nations which you are about to dispossess Listen to fortune tellers and to diviners, but as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. You know, it's just a little side. I don't ever pick up the local newspaper and turn to my horoscope and read it because that is divination. That is forbidden by God. So we just don't do these things. So let me say this. You can pray over it. You can say a blessing over it, and God is still not going to bless it if it is an unclean or unholy thing. God is never going to bless a ham sandwich. God is never going to bless a bacon cheeseburger. God is never going to bless a shrimp cocktail. And God is never going to bless a pepperoni pizza. And those are just some examples. Okay? Nor will God ever bless a pro-abortion candidate or a pro-LGBTQT candidate. And I do not care which political party they belong to. I have gone to, I have been a fill-in pastor at ch churches right here in this town. And I've been never, I've been asked to never come back for speaking out about abortion in a supposed Holiness congregation. Recently, I, and I'm sure you did too, 
read about the so-called pastor who went and blessed the opening of a brand new abortion clinic. I can guarantee you two things. I can bear guarantee you that God did not bless that abortion clinic, and I can guarantee you I do not want to be that pastor come judgment day. Lest we, lest we forget, there were a few rabbis there too. <laughs> Which brings me to point three, my final point. Okay? God is going to judge this world and us as well. Okay? And here's the tie into this week's Torah portion. Okay, this week's Torah portion is entitled Lech Lecha and means go out, go out. In it, God is commanding Abraham, or Abraham at this time, to come out from among his people and to separate himself to God. That call of God is upon all of us. We are to come out and separate ourselves from this world. We are not to mix the clean with the unclean, the holy with the unholy. We are not to yield to syncretism. Before God judges this world, he is going to judge his own house first. 1 Peter 4, 17 says this, For it is time... For judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? He is going to judge his people. He is going to judge you and me. Do you want to be found by God to be mixing the holy with unholiness? Do you want to be found by God to be mixing the clean with the unclean? If you answer no, then let me ask you. How are you living your life? Do you submit your life to God? Do you live according to his word? Do you do what he tells you to do? Or do you do your own will in God's name? Do you do what he tells you not to do? In other words, blatantly sin? If you do that, do not ignore the warning in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25 through 26, which states... For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Or are you guilty of syncretism? Have you been taken in by Hasatan and his lies? Do you have idolatry plastered over the walls of your home? God is going to judge his people. Are we ready for this judgment? Are we ready to lech lecha? Are we ready to go out? Are we ready to come out of this world and live holy lives? We need to repent of our syncretism. and We need to alter our lifestyles so that they are in obedience to God. We need to quit mixing the holy with the unholy. Are we ready for God to judge us? We had better be because it's coming. And it may be here far sooner than we think. Amen? Amen. Okay. Where did you first find that word? See?